Hello everyone, Big Clingy here, and welcome to the start of my first time playing Final Fantasy 1. Thanks to Square Enix for sending me a download code for this game. This is going to be an interesting experience for me because I am a huge JRPG fan and I have never played this game. Uh, so I am probably going to be making a lot of, you know, weird mistakes and missing certain things. And uh, I will say, though, that uh, I'm not going to call this strictly blind because I've absorbed a lot of information about this game just via general pop cultural osmosis. Um... And looking at wikis on the internet and things like that. But some information that I talk about, well, I'll probably be getting stuff wrong. So I know that all the diehard fans of this game, like, feel free to correct me. Uh, and at the same time, though, uh, I'm going to be trying to play ahead so that I can mostly experience this on my own and um, not have a lot of help. But anyway, let's get into this by selecting new game. Yeah, the song that's playing now, I think, is called Prel uh, Prelude, which is in a lot of the games. But uh, apparently, like, I think this might be the first fact about this game that I get horribly wrong, so forgive me if I do. But I think, like, the composer just threw this together in, like, a few minutes, and it ended up being such an iconic song. But anyway. So, yes, here we go. So, for, so for the new game, you actually, um, in this game, there are no fixed party members. You actually get to choose, um, you get to have a party of four characters and you give them all names and you also choose their classes. Ah, uh, okay, there is actually a suggested names option. I know that some of the other re-releases had this and there are some name suggestions that I did want to, that I did think were interesting and I sort of wanted to use. So, um, this is kind of giving me the standard party of like the warrior, thief, black mage, white mage. This is called fighter in some translations. But uh, in terms of the class options here, we have, yeah, warrior can use a wide array of weapons and armor. It's kind of like, if you've seen my Final Fantasy XII videos, I think it is that different classes can equip different weapon types and armor types. Uh, the thief uh, nimbly runs circles around opponents. Uh, another fact that I might have wrong that I've heard from the internet is that in the original version of the game, the thief was supposed to be better at running from battles, but due to a bug, escaping from battles was based on like which slot you were in the party, not like your actual speed stat and stuff. The monk um, fights using bare knuckled attacks. Apparently they're pretty strong. And I didn't realize that red mage was actually an option from the beginning. I thought that was like a secondary class you had to unlock later. So red mage is possible, they kind of combine white magic and black magic, but I don't think they go as high in terms of levels of spells as the others do. Not really sure of the specifics. White mage is mostly, you know, healing and stuff, and then the black mage is more about offensive magic. So I do want to have a warrior for my first party member, because the warrior of light is this game's representative in Dissidia, which means that a warrior was probably canonically part of Final Fantasy 1's party, and this warrior's name is literally just Warrior of Light, and I don't think they have an actual canonical name in any, like, official media that I've seen. Okay, so these just randomly cycle through a few things. Uh, but anyway... Oh, okay, since this is a PC version, I can actually type the name. The closest thing that I could find to a canonical name for the Warrior of Light comes from uh, a novel... Uh, called Final Fantasy Memory of Heroes, and their name was Setro, S-E-T-R-O. And, and I think I'll, I'll go with that. Now, I suppose for uh, the White Mage, I do want to have a White Mage in my party because this is my first time I'm ever playing this game and I feel like doing that without a White Mage is a recipe for disaster. And here's the interesting thing. So, in a lot of later releases, the White Mage has typically been considered female. But in the original game, the gen uh, their gender was actually ambiguous and in a way lent more towards, like, leaned more towards male. Especially in their upgraded class, which had them without the hood. And I actually really like the idea of a male white mage. You don't see that often. And one of the name uh, suggestions for white mages in earlier re-releases of this was Noah. And I actually think that's kind of a cool name for a male white mage. So I'm going to go with that. I know that's also the name of a, of a semi-important NPC in Final Fantasy XII, but still. Uh, and... 
Okay, I, uh, I'm just trying to think whether I go for a black mage or a red mage for this, because I know that it's kind of cliche to have a black mage and a white mage, but at the same time, I, I really want a black mage, because I want to just try and experiment with as many spells as I can use. And the black mage here does look like the kind of cartoony creature they usually are in some of the other games, and that's how they look like upgraded in the in some of the re-releases, but in this particular re-release, they're hearkening more towards the original sprites, and the black mage's upgraded sprites sprite looks, they take their hat off, and they look completely human, and also male, so, uh, there goes my, um, my, uh, thoughts of treating the Black Mage as female for this playthrough, so I could have a female party member, uh, so, in terms of name for you, for this one, I might also go with one of the names in the novelization, because I was looking at some of the suggested names from earlier versions, and I didn't really like any of them. Uh, Teol is the name of the Black Mage in the novelization, and, uh, that actually does sound like it, it could work. And now for this last one, this is a class that I want to change, because instead of a thief, I want to have a monk in the starting party, because I, I think that would be kind of fun. That also gives me two physical fighters and two mages. And looking at all of the suggested names for the monk in some earlier re-releases of this game, I found one that I really wanted to do. Yes, Duncan was one of the name suggestions for the monk, and, um, <laughs> I had to do it because that's Duncan over there. So, yes, with that, we are done. Begin the game with this party. And if I'm guessing right, we might be thrown directly into the world map. Or there'll be a bit of an intro first. The world lies shrouded in darkness. There really should be some kind of ominous narrator saying this. I didn't actually know there was a desert in this game. The winds die. This part of the map looks very Chrono Trigger, actually. The seas rage. The earth decays. The people believe in a prophecy, patiently awaiting its fulfillment. When darkness veils the world, four warriors of light shall come. After a long journey, four young travelers did at last appear. And in the hand of each was clutched a crystal. Okay, so yes, we have, um, I, I've actually switched X and Circle, so I'm using a PlayStation 4 controller for this, because it's a bit more convenient than a keyboard for me. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've switched X and Circle, uh, in the options menu before I started this, because they feel a little bit more natural to me that way. So, back and run, open and close menu. So, uh, it's actually kind of, kind of interesting, because I just thinking that this was originally an NES game, so it was designed for two-button controllers. You just had A and B, apart from start and select. So I don't think the Switch party member left and right options were really in the original version of the game. Uh, and then we have our minimap on and off, okay. Alright, we have a full minimap of the world right now. Although I almost want to turn it... Oh, uh, okay, I can change its size there. Interesting. Okay, I can make it smaller as well. And I was also wondering if this game would have, like, a remix soundtrack or the original soundtrack, but, um, yeah, I guess remix it is. And Cornelia, or Corneria, as it is, as it is called in some versions. This is Cornelia, the City of Dreams. That's the welcome to Corneria person that is constantly memed on online. Actually, I feel like, yeah, using the D-pad probably makes more sense for this game. Do you like how there's a map where you can see the shops and stuff? So, um... 
I haven't played a lot of old school JRPGs. In fact, I don't even know if it's right to even call this a JRPG because, like, RPGs, JRPGs and Western RPGs hadn't really split off from each other at this point. But, um, okay, tutorial people. Uh, my basic understanding of old school JRPGs is talk to everybody in every town because usually the only real plot in these games is people in the town telling you to do something or go somewhere and then that's what you're supposed to do next. Of course, you can also just walk all over the world and likely get killed by overpowered random encounters. Uh, shields, helms, gloves, and body. Okay, so we have multiple different armor slots. Yes, uh, won't do much good sitting in your inventory randomly. Yes, I'm pretty sure that in, a, in in this kind of game, like, you definitely want to be carrying a lot of stuff, because if you get out in the field and you just, um, get wiped out, yeah. Okay, so these things. So my first exposure to the, like, tents and cottages was actually Kingdom Hearts. I never played any of the Final Fantasy games that had those originally. Okay, yeah, HP and... Yeah, only use them outdoors, so I guess that means on the world map. So, uh, oh yeah, and certain pieces. Yeah, I have a feeling there are certain pieces of equipment that you can use like items. Is to use it and try out. Well, hopefully they're not one use only. And yeah, key items probably work the same way they do in most games. Yes, finding weaknesses. Okay, so it's kind of a case of like, you kind of have to infer based on what they look like. Uh, yeah, Thunder will deal particularly heavy damage, so some- and, and usually like in a lot of these RPGs, like there are weapons that are called things like Dragon Buster, so it's pretty obvious what they're effective against. Black and white magic. Healing and defensive spells, black magic, so there's no like green magic, which is like, I mean, I think, I think 12 is- 12 and maybe Tactics are the only games that have green magic. Okay, each level contains four distinct spells. Learn three of the four sp Okay, that's interesting. Okay, that's... that's different. So, yeah, you can change range of spells. In fact, if I go into the menu here... So, um... F1... Oh, I wonder... I was wondering how the MP system in this game worked, whether it was using like a traditional MP menu, or if it worked like the original version, I think it does. Uh, basically, I think the way that this works is, um, okay, you don't even have any magic right now, it seems. But, um, that you sort of have a Dungeons & Dragons style spell slot system, where you can cast certain levels of spells a certain number of times before you have to rest as opposed to an MP meter. Most of the re-releases of this game use an MP meter, but um, that's not actually the case in this version, which I wasn't expecting. Oh, the monk starts with the staff. And everyone else has staffs, <laughs> so it's the one knife and three staff crew. And status, okay, strength, agility, stamina, intellect, luck. Accuracy 10%, that better not be like my actual accuracy, because that would be really bad. Maybe that's just, like, added to, um, stuff. Yeah, the monk starts with higher strength at base, but lower stamina. So, yeah, the, the warrior's a bit more of a tank. Uh, white mage and then black mage. Yeah, black mage has more intellect. White mage has more stamina, which is probably good, and more HP. Which, I'm guessing stamina does affect HP. And I'm guessing order that changes the party. Quick save. Now, I wonder if quick save is just, um, like, let you reload, uh, at any time, but it's temporary. Whereas, like, an actual hard save requires you to be at a, a special save point or, like, a... Normally, you can save freely in towns. Uh, no, we don't want to stay at an inn. I wonder if this is one of those RPGs where everyone met at an inn. I'll have to think about a backstory for how this party, um, came together at some point. Because that's kind of one of the things about uh, these kinds of games, is that you don't really have much of a, like, the characters, it's up to you to determine their personalities and backstories. Provoker. Ah, pirates. Well, if we know um, our Fire Emblem, we're going to need to go and um, fight those pirates at some point. So we have 500 gil to start with, and we can buy uh, exactly one Phoenix down. Partially restores HP, partially restores HP, and MP, and then, yeah, Cottage is full, but it's pretty expensive. I just love the idea of, of you just carrying a Cottage in your pocket. Ah, uh, I don't know whether I should spend my starting gold on potions or on weapons, and I kind of wonder if I should spend it on weapons and armor. I'll definitely need potions. 
<laughs> Dancer is not a class in this game. Yeah, restoring the crystals, I think, is what we're supposed to do. We have to, I think, carry them to the four temples and fight the four... I know about the four elemental themes. So anyway, Nunchaku, okay, so our monk can use them. Well, wow, okay, these are really cheap, so I probably should go ahead and buy these. Uh, black mages can use the knife, but they're a bit worse with it. That just straight up attack plus 12. Huh, the warrior can use a staff, and it's better than what he currently has. Although, I'd probably rather get the rapier. The rapier is a little bit less accuracy than the knife. Yeah, I guess it's like a plus to accuracy as opposed to... And then the hammer is just straight up attack plus one, which the white mage can use, which is interesting. Considering that the staff isn't actually buffing magic, maybe I should get the hammer. So I'll get one of those. Oh, I actually, I love that buying sound effect. I, I, I know I've heard it before, though. And I'll get a rapier as well. And I'll get Nunchaku. And we can equip straight from this menu, thankfully. I'm going to experiment with a knife first, because I might not even need high power against the initial enemies, and the extra accuracy might be useful in that regard. Monk, though, you are definitely getting Nunchaku. And you're getting the hammer, because that doesn't really uh, detriment you in any way, I was about to say, but that doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, so that's what we can do for weapons. Now, in terms of armor, I feel like that's very necessary in a lot of old-school JRPGs, because you tend to get killed very quickly. And a from what I can tell, a lot of these games are kind of about grinding to make sure that you have um, the right equipments. Like, grinding for money uh, tends to happen quite often, these kinds of things. Okay, so um, only uh, these two can use um, armor besides clothes. Uh, no, it would be the body armor slot. Okay, does lower my evasion slightly, but I'll probably take that over, um, yeah, the, the defense... Oh, I know, I was going to give you the chain mail, and you the leather armor, obviously. It looks like unequipping your clothes give you slightly higher evasion. <laughs> but, yes, let's not do that in a public place. Not selling any shields or helmets or uh, arm equipment, though. Can we check the well? Oh, can't climb inside, but maybe, maybe there might be some other ones. Hello, you're blocking your house. Oh, the princess has also been has been kidnapped. Running the Crescent Moon and just just up and left town. Okay, so he is so Crescent Moon. That's probably a key item that we'll need to find for later. Oh, right, we have to buy magic. That makes sense. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna grab fire. Oh, and we have to choose which of our three slots to equip that to. Yeah, I'm gonna obviously want to take that. Sleep? Uh, I don't know, like, I know that in a lot of the earlier Final Fantasy games, status spells aren't good, so, I don't know, and, I, and I'll, I'll take Thunder as well. Focus. Lower one enemy's evasion. That's interesting. Normally that works by, like, increasing your own hit rate, but I suppose, like, maybe in terms of, like, limitations, that was the only way they could code it back then. Oh yeah, yeah, this would be a white magic store, and the other would be a black magic store. So obviously we want Cure. Going without cure will be really dumb. Dia, oh yeah, this. Yeah, this is actually kind of kind of funny because in a different JRPG series, this is a healing spell, so I'm gonna have to remove my muscle memory from that. Uh, but yeah, I I have heard this is a thing like Final Fantasy One didn't use the revive kill zombie mechanic that a lot of other games would do, where healing magic hurts undead. So instead, you just have this as like an anti undead spell. Raise one ally's defense. I don't know how good this actually is, but I might be alright in a pinch, and then blink. Raises caster's evasion, so only the caster gets that one. Uh, I don't know how good that is, but I mean, making your white mage more survivable is probably a good thing, but protect can affect anybody, not just the caster. And I suppose there's, I mean, I'm running a little low on money, but I mean, there's not a whole lot for me to get at this point, and I mean, it's pretty important that I get all of this, um, this magic. So, I don't know if you have to, like, restock your magic later, like, if you if using it up in battle, like, uses it up, or if, like, once you buy a spell, once you have it permanently. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, not sure how this works exactly. Again, this is just sort of a learning process. So, yeah, and if we forget, we can uh, remember them later, apparently? 
Oh, so you, so Liu Kang was the one who made the prophecy. The warriors of light will come to save the princess. Well, we are warriors of light, but I thought we were here to kill chaos, not save the princess. Then I don't think we're supposed to know chaos exists at this point, but I mean, that's a pretty open secret at this point. So, I feel like maybe this is like Dragon Quest, where you need churches to resurrect people. Because I remember that could actually get pretty expensive later on in the game. Oh, I have enough money for like a few potions. I have exactly one gill! I really hope I didn't, I didn't use my early game resources badly, but I guess we'll see. So, are you gonna... well, you, you're not gonna let us through. Are you gonna... Aha! Okay. Our crystals act as like identification. Yes, that is true. We cannot answer you because we um, ha are blank slate characters. You know, I mean, if there was some kind of prophecy that is just telling people, oh, hey, go see the king with these crystals and you will be the heroes who will save the world. Like, surely there would be a whole lot of people around the world who would just make fake crystals and, and do this. Will you rescue my daughter, Sarah? Garland, a knight once in his majesty's service, has knocked us all down and abducted princes. I'm sorry, I had to. Taking our trophies in the Chaos Shrine. Because he has no connection with chaos whatsoever. Yeah, this is another thing where um playing slash knowing Dissidia kind of spoils a lot of things about this game. Aha! Well, we just happen to be the finest swordsman, monk, black mage, and white mage in the land, eventually. Okay, no bridge leading north. Ah, I you know, maybe this is where the TV trope Broken Bridge comes from. Broken Bridge is a is a term uh, is a trope in like RPGs that's used to mean like there's a oh she knows information okay she didn't really have much useful to tell me other than I'm a dancer before ah yes yeah, so one of your knights hath gone rogue and it decided to kidnap the princess oh yeah we can run with this <laughs> and look funny doing it. But yeah, the whole, the whole, um, broken bridge trope. It's a trope that a lot of RPGs, and not just RPGs, like other games do, where it's like, hey, um, you know, you're not supposed to be in this part of the world yet, so, uh, but you can freely kind of go anywhere. But, except not really, because, you know, we don't want you to be in this part of the world, so we're going to put, like, a broken bridge or a fallen tree or, like, you know, um... This is like in Pokemon, it's the HM. The... There's a tree in the way, and you need cut to clear it. I, I like actually, I like how the mini map works with with the um, inside and outside of rooms. Yeah, I had a feeling you were maybe another princess. That's actually really sad. We need to go and uh, get your sister back post haste. This is not Dragon Quest 1, though, so we're not going to be, you know, having ye olde english -y for um, everything. And how do we get to that area there? I almost wonder if this is one of those situations where you can enter the castle from behind and access a different part of it than you normally could. Or we can go around here. Maybe this is how we go in, go in there. This music is pretty nice, though. Okay, yeah, so you just have to go around the outside. The Elf King, okay. I get the feeling, like, I, I've heard there's a boss elf in this game. <laughs> I say exactly the same thing as my clone up there. Okay, yeah, so we need the key to get in there. Makes sense. We'll have to come back uh, with that later. And I believe that, yeah, that should be everything we can do here. Though there might be... I know some of these old RPGs have, um... How, okay, before we go out, though, um, I'm just going to head back in here for a second. Um, I don't know why I'm heading back in here. I'm just kind of scared to fight random encounters and get inevitably killed by them. But, um, yeah, um, a lot of them have, like, secret doors in, like, a, a bush or something like that. Now, now that we're on the... Yes, we can save now that we're on the world map. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, just because I'm a rebel, I'm going to use the lowest save slot. I feel like I've heard this song before. 
Okay, first encounter. Was that a preemptive strike for me or the enemy? I've definitely heard this music before, though. Okay, so it's just goblins. Yeah. Oh, okay, so this is one of those RPGs where you choose commands for your whole party, and then everyone acts, I think, in order of speed. Good to know. Oh, we can press left and right to get the defend and flee commands. I'm going to be focusing my uh, fire on just one enemy, maybe. I don't know how much damage four goblins going to do to me at once, but um, we'll see. Yeah, I have two uses of level one spells, so... Yeah, maybe let's not waste those on regular goblins. However, let's see if these goblins are highly flammable. I'm going to target this one there. One hit! Okay, so attacks can hit multiple times. I like the effect on the fire spell there. But from the looks of things, these goblins go down very quickly to... Okay, yeah, monks hit hard. Okay, that's a very good remix of the victory theme, I'll just say. that That's, that's really good. Uh, yeah, here is said broken bridge, so we can't proceed any further. Uh, guess we can... Uh, that's the wrong button. Oh, we can switch our... A lead character like this. I can switch it to Duncan. I've already forgotten what the button for the um, the map is. Oh, it's options. Okay, yeah, there we go. Because, like, usually forests have slightly different encounters. Okay, yeah, that's a preemptive attack from the enemy. Yeah, the multi-hit thing is... Uh, I know, what what game have I played that does that? Um, um, actually, you know, um, uh, FF12 does that. Um, you can get some kind of crazy combos with that later on. Yeah, these things do not have much health. I should probably not waste magic on them. And that is... I, I still I still really like the original rendition of the Final Fantasy Victory theme, the one that has, like, the, the, the original second half of it. In Final Fantasy VII and then onward, they use different, like, second halves of the theme. I'm getting ambushed surprisingly often. That might be because I don't have a thief. Also, gotta uh, be... Uh, pay attention to Teal there. I don't actually know if, like, the enemy... Like, if, if where you are in the party order affects, like, how enemies target you or not. Okay, they seem to... I'm, I'm, I'm guessing they maybe have 10 HP. I don't know if their HP is, like, randomized or not, or if it's always the same. But, level up! Uh, Cetro gains, uh, more, uh, HP and strength. Duncan gains more HP, stamina and luck. Okay. Noah gains strength and intellect. And Teal gains intellect and nothing else. <laughs> he's... He, I get, I'm guessing he's, like... Maybe in my headcanon he's one of those just, you know, insufferable genius types. He just always thinks he's the smartest person in the room. This is that same battle that I had earlier. Uh, battles actually go by pretty quickly. Although I have noticed that there's like a fast thing in the in the corner. I might be like having the battle speed like defaulting to high or something. And, and yeah, you might also notice there's no ATB. Uh, this 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 game was before Final Fantasy used an ATB system. Now I'm guessing that's the shrine we're looking for. So I'm going to avoid going there just yet. Like, everything is just goblins, isn't it, right now? But, um... But, yeah, I, I, I forget which game was the first one to use an ATB system. This one just uses a standard turn-based combat system where people seem to act in order of speed. Monks are uh, pretty powerful, but um, if watching Critical Role is any indication, they usually are. Um, yes, Bo is... I still think Bo is kind of broken. So, those mountains are preventing me from going that way. So, like, right now, things are kind of, uh... Kind of linear-ish in terms of the map. And that's usually... I mean, I don't know, like, people, different people have different priorities and stuff. But, um, that's usually what you want. Uh, well, it's at least what I want right now. Because, like, I know that in a lot of these older RPGs... And I'm probably going to use the term older RPGs a lot. But in a lot of these older RPGs... Yeah, White Mage, uh, Noah hits pretty hard, actually. I mean, he has a hammer, that would make sense, but, um... Uh, what I was saying was, um... Was that, like, these games are pretty infamous for, um... If you go, like, the way on the map that the game doesn't intend for you to go, then you get ambushed by level 5 zillion enemies and just die. So... <laughs> okay, now we have Goblin Guards in combination with regular Goblins. 
So let's have the main fighters attack the goblin guards, and you guys go for the, um... It seems like right now the black mage is the one who's, um, doing not a lot of damage, uh, in terms... You are not an effective guard! <laughs> you have abandoned your post, goblin guard. But yeah, the black mage is not doing a whole ton of damage right now. I'm not even really sure about how the damage formulas work in, uh, this, um... In this game. Oh, uh, everyone is level 3 now. Duncan got quite a few stats there. And Teol gained 1 point of HP. <laughs> That's going to be extremely helpful to him surviving. Now, I don't know what level we really should be before we head into the shrine. I'm going to fight a few more encounters just to see. Oh, that's the game that I played that has these multi-hit indicators bravely default, of course! Yeah, why wouldn't it be bravely default? Bravely default's kind of a love letter to these kind of games. I know that you can get ludicrously high hit combos in bravely defaults, um, like later on. Yeah, that's a game that I just... It's just so... I really... I've said it before, like, it's a game that I wish I enjoy more than I actually did, but I just... I just never really got the hang of just how you were supposed to level up your jobs in that game. Just kind of got stonewalled at a certain point by, um... Yeah, I've told this story back in Final Fantasy XII, but, but it was like, you know, I guess I can tell stories while I'm semi-grinding here. Am I getting money from these encounters? Yeah, I'm definitely getting money from them. And I suppose the goblins would drop money they looted from. I'm just trying to think of, like, how you justify, you know, these encounters dropping money and stuff. But, like, I mean, I was thinking, like, maybe the kingdom's paying us for the goblin extermination. But, I mean, the goblins could have looted people and stolen their money and stuff. I'm overthinking this. But, like, that's that's what you're supposed to do with this. You're, like, this kind of... The whole point of this kind of game is to make your own story as you go along, kind of. Uh, which is something that they sort of... They sort of, sort of... Uh, that, like, wet... That, that, that kind of... Sorry, my words. I can't words right now. Uh, that's sort of the direction that Western RPGs kind of went into, whereas JRPGs lean more towards the combat and more about the, just the general story stuff. I mean, both are good for their own things, but... Um, I feel like this kind of strikes a good balance of both player-created story and just um, general, like, um, actual uh, pre-made um, you know, made story. Okay, we're level 4 in everyone. That might be... A Okay, HP seems to go up very quickly in this game. We, we, we started with, like, the 20s, and my fighters are getting into, like, the 80s already. That's interesting. Oh, hey, even my white mage is uh, in the 60s. Black mage, no. <laughs> yeah, T.O. is very much uh, all about magical effects. I feel like I feel like black mages are probably going to get better later on. Okay, you have to go there to actually get into the town. Because once we get access to like more spell more spell slots, higher level spells, and to the point where we can start like casting a lot more freely. As opposed to now, where it's just like Ah, I like that little flourish there. Um, where, you know, you can only cast like two spells in one battle and then like, you know, that's your main form of offense. Uh apparently you were supposed to tell me useful information. Uh but Basically, uh, now that I've stayed at the inn, maybe I should buy some more healing items before I head out, especially a Phoenix Down. Because I think I'm, my next destination is going to be the Chaos Shrine. Oh, I don't even have enough money for a Phoenix Down. <laughs> we can sell our clothes, but it barely, it's barely worth anything. Oh yeah, I haven't even equipped the Rapier yet. See, yeah, at this point, I'm actually not sure if I really need the Rapier right now. I kind of rather have accuracy than, than power when enemies die in two hits anyway. I'll get one of these, just for the road. And some more potions. So, as I said, with that, my next destination will be the Chaos Shrine. But um, with that, I'm going to end this part, and I'll see you at the Shrine for what is most likely the first dungeon. See you then.